بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله. We continue reading from Imam Razali's The 99 Beautiful Names of God. المقصد الأسماء في شرح أسماء الله الحسنى. Translated by David Borel and Nazir Daher. We have reached page 154. This is the epilogue. And uh, as we said at the end of the last session, we said uh, we are going to start with the very uh, two verses of poetry that we have ended with the last session. And these are the glass is fine and the wine is pure. So alike are they that the facts are confused. As if there were wine and no glass, or a glass and no wine. رق الزجاج وراقت الخمر فتشابها فتشاكل الأمر فكأنما خمر ولا قدح وكأنما قدح ولا خمر. The context for uh, including these two. Uh, verses of uh, of poetry is that as if there is some kind of union, if you will, between both, where the in in one in one case. In one case, uh, as if the whole thing is wine and there is no glass. And the second case, the whole thing is glass and no wine. Still, this might not explain the context still very well. The uh, There is no way, there is no way, this is metaphorical, allegorical, figurative, because if we, do have, if we have really two uh, essences, there is no way that there will be, that one of them will replace the other. Both of them will continue to exist. And as we will see from the uh, narrative that follows, uh, it has to be uh, any statement, any statement that reflects, that is ex that is really at face value absolutely problematic and cannot be accepted. So you have to uh, interpret it allegorically, such as the uh, statement that has been to uh, attributed to Abhizid Bastami. This is why Imam Ghazali says, following these two verses of poetry. Now the claim of the one who said, I am the truth, either means that the poet means when he said, I am who I desire. And the one I desire is I. Or he says, or he says it in error. As Christians err, they definitely make a mistake in thinking that divinity is united with humanity in Jesus. Hasha wa kalla. What does it what does it mean? It means that there is we have two different natures. One of them is impossible. One of them has to exist in space and time, and the one is impossible to exist in space and time. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cannot exist in space and time, cannot basically take shape, cannot be basically three, four dimensional, if you will, including time. And not only uh, about such uh, two natures, even if we talk about, uh, as Imam Ghazali, we will uh, reach that, but nevertheless, 
even if we talk about one servant and another, one of them cannot exist in the other, replace the other. So the uh, the uh, to say that there are three persons in the Trinity and all of them God, and these are three natures. The Holy Spirit appears always in both in literature and in uh, in artistic representations as a beard, as a white dove, and Jesus Christ is you know as a real person, and then we have God the uh, the Godhead, the the Father. Uh, usually, if Jesus Christ is Jesus Christ is presented as youngish, thirtyish, and Sufrullah uh, Alim, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, God is represented as an old man, and all three they exist at the same time, and all of the, all of them. The problem is that they will never use the word person in Arabic. Shakhs, ثلاثة أشخاص. They will use the word uknum, plural aqanim, uh, and this is uh, and originally. If you go to the Arab, it will say kalima rumiya. Well, we do have the equivalent of person in Arabic, shaks. But if you say to an Arab person that that God has three persons, thalath ashkhas. They will never accept it, regardless of their religious background. This is with all due respect, and you know the it's a it's a package, and definitely will uh, uh, what Imam Ghazali mentioned this, and we need to address it. So for Abu Zid al-Bastami, may God be merciful to him, if in fact it be his, this statement, when he said, may I be praised for how exalted is my nature. Subhani ma a'zama sha'ni. If it's really his, it could be number one, it could be that it proceeded from his tongue in circumstances of reporting the speech of God. Great and glorious. As though he had been overheard reciting, there is no God save me, so serve me. La ilaha illa ana fa'budni. This is the, of course, the, the context for this uh, verse is... Uh, uh, Prophet Moses, peace be upon him, returning from Median after finishing the eight or ten years. Eight or ten, because that's exactly what was mentioned in the uh, in the Quran. I believe it. He completed ten, but yeah, this is simply a conjecture. Uh, so on his way back, it was already night. He saw. Uh, he saw uh, fire at a distance and he told his family to stay. He will go to the Inni Anastunara. And this is really a, a very beautiful uh, verse, the concept of Anastu. The human being is from Enas and not from Nisyan, as the overwhelming majority uh, would say, almost everyone would say it's Al Insan min Nisyan. No, Al Insan is from Al Enas. Anisa, Nasiya, Nisyanan. Okay. Inni anastu naro. Da'alli atikum nubi qabasana ujjala nari huda. Falamma, falamma ataha, nudia ya Musa. Innani ana rabbuka fakhlana alayka inna kabiru al-muqaddis tuwa wa nakhtarik fassama ala yuha. Innani ana allahu now here we have this uh, free, you know, phrase from the Quran, part of the verse which was taken 
out of the uh, whole verse, the whole thing, إِنَّنِي أَنَا اللَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا أَنَا فَعْبُدْنِي وَأَقْمُ الصَّلَةِ ذِكْرِي لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا أَنَا فَعْبُدْنِي So Imam Ghazali says, it could be simply being reported, like somebody was reciting the Qur'an, you pass by and you could hear only that much, for example. So the same thing about Subhani Ma'alam Sha'ni, say that uh, Abu Zil Bastami was speaking about Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, and this is a statement about Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala saying this in the first person, singular. That's number one, that's a possibility. And so could be interpreted as reported speech. Or number two, he could have noticed the perfection of his share in the attribute of holiness. This is his share, not Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the human being's share. As we remarked concerning one's rising by knowledge above things imagined or sensed or above pleasures and passions by determination. So he spoke of the holiness of his soul when he said, may I be praised. And he may, be, he may have seen the greatness of his nature by comparison with the nature of common people. When he said, how exalted is my nature. Subhani ma'adha mashani. Yet in spite of that, he knew that he was holy and his nature exalted only by comparison with the rest of people. And uh, so it's relative, it's not absolute. This is, and maybe one should uh, pay attention to the translation Bil idafati ila al فلا نسبة له إلى قدس الرب تعالى وعظم شأنه. You know, this is not. You know, it should not be compared to Allah سبحانه وتعالى. There's another aspect to this, and he may have seen the greatness of his nature by comparison with the nature of common people when he said, "How exalted is my nature!" Yet, in spite. Of that, he knew that he was holy and his nature exalted only by comparison, relative with the rest of people, and not in relation to the holiness of the Lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Most High and Holy One. Or the immensity of his nature, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Furthermore, it might have, this is now the uh, possibility, the it might have been the case that he emitted, he emitted, he said what he said, this utterance in his inebriation and in the ecstasies of his state. And that returning to sobriety and a balanced state demanded caution regarding suggestive utterances something the state of inebriation may not be able to master. What, Imam, what basically Imam Ghazali is saying, what he says is that uh, this is, they, lit they literally talk about sukr, drunkenness. And uh, um, wine is not wine in the language of the uh, of spirituality but of course uh, some people might misunderstand uh, this uh, and this drunkenness really is about being um, absorbed by the beauty by the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the degree that as if one is intoxicated This is what they say in the ecstasies of his state. A certain hal, a certain state, spiritual state, where one is not in command of the language. And they, they do talk about being drunk with that. 
and sobriety. It has nothing to do with alcohol. Wine is a metaphor, really, indeed. And we know very well that when they say that ecstasy is of his state, it's uh, a dislocation of consciousness. Physically, he is with you, but he is not with you. Until he awakes from that state. But if you were to disregard these two interpretations in favor of identification, they had, then then that would make the statement utterly impossible. And one ought not regard the positions of men so highly so as to give credence to what is impossible. It rather behooves us to know men by the truth than the truth by men. And this phrase in Arabic, the criterion is the truth, not men, not people. Regarding the fifth possibility, that of inherence, hulul, that is the conception of one who says that the Lord may be blessed and exalted in hears in man, halla, or that man in hears in the Lord, the other way around. May the Lord of, the Lord of Lords be exalted well beyond the saying of evildoers. This saying even if it were true would not demand identification nor require that men be characterized by the attributes of the Lord for the attributes of the one inhering do not become the attributes of the one in whom he inheres. Rather, the attributes of the one who inherits remains as they were. The sense in which inheritance is impossible will only be understood after one understands the meaning of inheritance. For with such specialized notions, if one does not grasp them by means of some illustration, it is hardly, it is hardly possible to know how to affirm or deny them. If one does not understand the meaning of inheritance, how can one know whether inheritance is in fact, is a fact or impossibility? We say that inheritance signifies two things. One of them is the relation with, which holds between bodies and the space they occupy. Yet that only obtains between two bodies. Whatever is free from any notion of bodiliness cannot conform to that case. Secondly, it signifies the relation holding between accident and substance. Now accidents have their subsistence in substance, and this may be expressed by saying that they inhere in it. And that is impossible for anything which subsists in itself. So far be it from us to mention the Lord the Most High and Holy One in this context, since it is impossible that anything which subsists in itself in here and something subsisting in itself, except by way of the proximity among bodies. So inheritance between men is inconceivable. How then can it be conceived between man and the Lord? So if inheritance transference, identification, and being characterized by exact likeness of the attributes of God may be praised and exalted, or are all in truth invalid. The only meaning which remains from all, the, from all they have offered is the one we have indicated in the councils 
tanbihat accompanying each name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the 99 uh, attributes and that blocks the absolute saying that the meanings of the names of God most high become attributes of men of course not except as qualified by reservations free from ambiguity otherwise the absolute use of this utterance is misleading you may ask what does it mean to say that man is still on the way and has not yet arrived even though he be characterized by all that فما معنى قوله إن العبد مع الاتصال بجميع ذلك سالك لا واصل سالك لا واصل still treading on the path سالك as if basically we talk about in, in grammar we say present continuous the ing still treading on the path did not arrive yet what does on the way or arrived mean here should know that being on the way involves refining one's character actions and knowledge and that means that there is a certain process there's a certain becoming And that means being occupied with one's formation externally and interior. Formation, reform, change, improvement, purification. In all this, a man is occupied with himself rather than his Lord. May he be praised and exalted, even though he be taken up with the formation of his inner self in preparation for arriving. The one who arrives is one to whom the clarified truth is revealed and who has become immersed in it. If this knowledge be considered, he knows none but God. And if his determination be considered, he has ambition for none but God. So all of him is taken up with the whole of him all of him, small case, is taken up with the whole of him, uppercase, capital, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the human being is taken up with the whole of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in witnessing and in concern, and so not occupied with himself, either externally in actions of worship or interiorly in refining his character. All of that is geared to purity, and it is the beginning, while the end lies in being stripped of oneself totally, and to be devoted to him, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so that it is as though he were he, and that is arriving, or attainment, as though he were he, as though he were Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now you might say the words of the Sufis are based on visions revealed to them in the stage of friendship. Tawr al-Wulaya. And reason falls short of grasping that. Yet all that you have said involves, we will notice that uh, this, this does not mean that reason is cancelled altogether. You should know that it is not possible for one to see in the stage of friendship anything which reason judges to be impossible. Certainly, it is possible for one to see something which exceeds reason. Yet in the sense that one will not grasp it by reason alone. For example, it may be revealed to a holy man that someone will die tomorrow. 
and that would not be known by the powers of reason because reason falls short of it. But it is not possible that it be revealed that God, may he be praised and exalted, will create tomorrow someone like himself, like God. That's impossible. Had the universe had, the universe had other gods, then there will be corruption in the universe. Each one will take his share and they will fight amongst each other. Possible. For reason shows that to be contrary to it rather than exceeding it. And even further from the mark that than that would be to say that God, may he be blessed, blessed and exalted, will make me like himself. And yet, more far-fetched than this would be to say that God, great and glorious, would make me become himself. That is, that I would become he. For this could only mean that I am a creature of yet God, the Most High and Holy One, makes me eternal. And while I am not creator of the heavens and earth, in fact, not creator of, in the real sense, of even one single cell. You cannot create one thing in the absolute sense while I'm not creator of the heavens and earth. God makes me creator of heaven and earth. That is the meaning of his saying, I looked and behold, I am he. If it is not interpreted, Asiru ana huwa. Whoever believes things like this has forfeited the power of reason and can no longer distinguish what he knows from what he does not know. So he might as well believe that it could be revealed to a holy man that the Sharia, the divine law, is false. Or that even if it were true, that God could change it and make it false. Or that he could make all of the sayings of the prophets false. Now, if someone says the impossibility of changing truth into a lie is only asserted by the power of reason, you must answer that changing truth into falsehood is no more remote than changing a creature into something eternal or man into the Lord. Whoever cannot distinguish what contradicts reason from what reason cannot attain is beneath being addressed. So let him be left in his ignorance. This is why this, this narrative is not fit for uh, public uh, discussion, public, this is not going to be, this is not secret, public discussion in the sense when the mosque has, for example, uh, mostly the, you know, the average person who has no clue about this, that's not something for them. And thus we conclude the chapter that epilogue really inshallah we will uh, start with the uh, chapter 2 this is after the 99 beautiful names we have the epilogue now concerning the meaning of the names offering an explanation how these many names re resolve to the essence with seven attributes according to the people of the sunnah على مذهب أهل السنة and uh, I hope that you will have uh, the patience to wait until we discuss أهل السنة who are primarily the uh, uh, Ash'arites and Maturidis and the original uh, أهل الحديث until then إن شاء الله سبحانك الله وحمدك نشهد أشهد لا إله إلا أنت السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته